In this video, we're going to talk about uh, the usage of colons, and uh, we're going to go over a couple of examples of how they might be used on an ACT or SAT. So, uh, colons, they're used relatively infrequently in pretty specific circumstances, and as such, questions involving colon placement are typically easily mastered. So even though we don't use them a lot, they're pretty easy to figure out. since there are not a lot of rules pertaining to them. So there are three common uses for colons. Before a list, as in this case, you'll see here, I've got a colon and I've got a list. Uh, before a list, before an explanation or clarification, and before a definition. However, we should be careful not to use colons immediately preceding direct objects of a verb. So if I say, the dog chased, the cat, that is the direct object of the verb chaste, or um, the direct objects of a preposition. Prepositions are things like of, on, in, by, uh, under, between. Those are usually followed by nouns, uh, and this noun uh, is the direct object of the preposition. So let's go over a couple of examples uh, not from the ACT. And I'm going to show you another little bit uh, of a trick here. If you are testing whether a comma belongs or not, uh, then we can actually check uh, by seeing what comes before the comma, excuse me, the colon. So uh, we only use colons after independent clauses. An independent clause is something that can stand alone as a sentence. So this is a very useful trick specifically on the ACT where you'll have a couple of different options and you can pretty readily see what's before the colon. So let's look at example one here. My dog likes to chase rabbits, cats, and squirrels. So this is obviously an extension of the example I gave you here. And some people will try to put a colon here. Well, we don't want the colon here because even though this is a list, these are all direct objects of the verb chase. Also note, now we can use the other uh, rule that I just gave you. Uh, this is not a hard and fast rule, but it's a pretty decent suggestion. Uh, my dog likes to chase rabbits, cats, and squirrels. Well, my dog likes to chase isn't really a complete sentence. Yeah, we can say it, uh, my dog likes to chase this and my dog likes to play chase, but we're left with this dangling verb here. We don't have a direct object for it. So typically we, we wouldn't consider this a complete sentence, and so there's no colon there. On the other hand, the next example, my dog will chase anything, uh, rabbits, cats, squirrels, beached sharks, and, and yes, uh, you should probably put an and here, though it's not completely necessary. Um, in this case, the list is not a direct object of anything. The object of the verb chase is the word anything, and furthermore, my dog will chase anything now is a complete sentence, so we should have a colon here. So let's check out a couple of other examples here. After our trip to the beach, we found sand on the carpets, the patio, and the couch. And again, we have a list, right? So some, some might say, well, we should put a colon here after on. But remember, on is a preposition, and these are direct objects of the preposition, like on what? On the carpets, the patio, and the couch. Also, you can check and say, well, if I put a colon here, then this should be a complete sentence, and it's not. It is not an independent clause. It cannot stand alone as a complete sentence. So we shouldn't put a colon there. And again, a similar sentence after our trip to the beach, we found sand everywhere. Now you'll note that this is an independent clause. And we do have a list that clarifies what everywhere means in this particular case. So yes, we should use a colon. And we have two more examples here that don't involve a list. Uh, these involve just clarifications. The westward expansion of the United States hit an apex in 1850. Hmm, your bell should be ringing already because that's a complete sentence. Or as I will say here, an independent clause. And then we get a simple non-list but singular clarification of the significance of 1850. So yes, we should use a colon here. And the next example, the westward expansion of the United States hit an apex in 1850 with California's entry into the Union. And uh, again, the temptation is to put the colon here after the word with. Uh, but first of all, this is not going to be an independent clause, not a complete sentence. And even though this clarifies the significance of 1850, it's the direct object of the preposition with. 
So we should not use a colon here. Okay, so we're going to take a look at a couple of examples from the ACT. I've got it from a couple of different ACT practice tests that ACT's uh, parent company has released uh, for public use. And here we are. In 2009, Libric and Arnold's experiments revealed that triangular snowflakes begin with the same process of chemical bonding and forms. Now, uh, again, I don't have question number eight here. This would have to be form. We'll look at this in another video. A hexagonal shape. The triangular shape is an illusion resulting from one significant addition to the process dust. And there's no punctuation here. And we've got a couple of different options. We can leave it as it is, as usual here. We can add is, we can add a colon, or we can add a semicolon. Um, so in this particular case, note that what comes before the word dust is a complete sentence. And leaving it with no punctuation at all is just clumsy. We have a clarification as to what the addition to the process is, so we shouldn't leave it with no punctuation at all. Uh, you may astutely recognize that a comma would be okay. That's not an option on this particular question. Semicolon's no good. And we'll discuss this more in depth in a video on semicolons because that requires independent clauses or complete sentences on both sides. It sort of acts as a period. And this is not an independent clause. So because we have an independent clause before and a clarification, we should use a colon and the answer is C. Okay, from the same passage, number 12. And again, I'm going to start here. Although these snowflakes appear to have a triangular shape, they actually have a hexagonal pattern. This is the sentence of interest to us here. We're using a dash right now. Now, let's take a look at the first half here, because again, we have a colon as an answer choice. Is this a complete sentence? Although these snowflakes appear to have a triangular shape, and, and the answer is no. Okay. We have words like although or because uh, at the beginning of a clause, it's usually not gonna be an independent clause. So right away, we know it can't be a colon. And also, we know it can't be a semicolon. Okay. And the answer to this ends up being G, because what we have here is we have kind of a modifier clause, and then we have an independent clause. So usually when we have a subordinate clause and modifiers fall under that category, then we follow it with an independent, we'll use a comma. Let's move forward from the same test. And this is the 2016-17 practice test. Um, all of these questions, I believe, except the last one that I've screen capped here. Um, so you can get all of these straight from the ACT website. In the half light of the rising sun, we begin to make out, uh, excuse me, began to make out the dark lines of the cliffs at the crater's edge. Again, we're only looking at question number 24 here. And again here, the part before the colon, which is now the no change option, is not an independent clause. So right away, we know it can't be a colon. And again, we know it can't be a semicolon. That needs two independent clauses. So much like the last one, where we have that subordinate and then an independent after, we're just going to use a comma and keep this answer very nice and simple. But the key is that you can't use a colon here. This is not an independent clause, nor really is this a clarification. So this strikes out on both counts. And looking at uh, question number 62, so we're going to start here. Jones even fudges her date of birth. She falsely lists May 1st, International Workers' Day, and ages herself by nearly a decade. So we're going to stop here. Um, so here we have an option to place a colon in place of this comma. Well, let's see. Do we have a complete sentence? Jones even fudges her date of birth. Well, we have a subject, a verb, and uh, a complete sentence, a complete thought. So this is an independent clause. Note, of course, that we also have another independent clause here thereafter. She falsely lists May 1st, International Workers' Day, and ages herself by nearly a decade. That could stand alone as a sentence as well. However, the answer with the semicolon changes she falsely lists to falsely listing. And when I replace that, it would read falsely listing May 1st, International Workers' Day, and ages herself by nearly a decade. That's not a complete sentence, and quite frankly, it's terribly clumsy. 
Now, there's another option with a colon here. You can ignore this vertical dash. I'm not sure what happened there. That's uh, not any sort of punctuation. That's just something that happened in my software here. Um, where we put it after falsely listing. So then the sentence would read, Jones even fudges her date of birth, falsely listing colon May 1st. Well, if I place the end of the sentence here effectively, that's not a complete sentence. Jones even fudges her date of birth, falsely listing. So again, remember, we have to use colons after things that can stand alone as sentences, so that's not an option. Well, G works really well here. Jones even fudges her date of birth, and then we're going to use a colon to clarify how she does so. And because this is an independent clause, we can use a colon. So when we use a colon after an independent clause, what comes after it can be an independent clause or not. Either way works. Okay. As long as what comes before it is an independent clause. And the last question, this is from a different test. This is from a much older test, but this is a really good illustration of one where we have um, a list that looks like it should have a colon, but actually it doesn't. So tunnel walls were created with layers of brick, ceramic blocks, tar-soaked felt for waterproofing, and concrete. So at first glance, this is an independent clause, and then we do have a list. However, we also have a preposition. And one of the things about colons is unless all of these uh, things in the list will have a preposition, generally they're not going to be before uh, come before prepositions. And we have another option um, with a colon here, which is uh, to place the colon here instead of here. So tunnel walls were created with, and then we definitely have a very clear list of just items that it was created with. But remember, we don't want to use a colon after a preposition either. Furthermore, if I read up to the word with, which is where we place the colon with answer choice D, it says tunnel walls were created with. That's not a complete sentence. Remember, our colon must follow a complete sentence, uh, at least for the purposes of the ACT. So that's no good. And B is not good because we'd create a pause in an unnecessary place and break up an idea. So here the answer is just a very simple C. I hope this, uh, this video helps you understand colons a little bit better. Uh, if you found it helpful, please subscribe to our channel. We will have uh, plenty more SAT, ACT, uh, grammar, math, uh, all the way up to calculus uh, videos, as well as some interesting riddles uh, on our channel. So please subscribe, check out some of our other videos, comment, and uh, if you need to see something or you want to see something, um, a video on something, don't hesitate to contact us. Our information is in the description of the video. Thank you very much.